Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. In management, theory X, Y, and Z are theories of human motivation relating to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how human behavior and motivation are factors in productivity. They describe how management style is influenced by the perception that managers hold of their employees. So, what are the differences among these three theories, and how are they implemented in the workplace? In this video, I will answer these questions for you. Section 1, McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y. The idea that a manager's attitude has an impact on employee motivation was originally proposed by Dr. Douglas McGregor, a management professor at MIT during the 1950s and 1960s. In his 1960 book, The Human Side of Enterprise, McGregor proposed two theories by which managers perceive and address employee motivation. He referred to these opposing motivational methods as Theory X and Theory Y management. First, Theory X. According to McGregor, Theory X management assumes the following. 1. Work is inherently distasteful to most people, and they will attempt to avoid work whenever possible. 2. Most people are not ambitious, have little desire for responsibility, and prefer to be directed. 3. Most people have little aptitude for creativity in solving organizational problems. 4. Motivation occurs only at the physiological and security levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 5. Most people are self-centered, and as a result they must be closely controlled and often coerced to achieve organizational objectives. 6. Most people resist change. 7. Most people are gullible and unintelligent. So essentially, Theory X managers tend to take a pessimistic view of their employee and assume that they are naturally unmotivated and dislike work. As a result, they think that team members need to be prompted rewarded, or punished constantly to make sure that they complete their tasks. According to McGregor, organizations with a Theory X approach tend to have several tiers of managers and supervisors to oversee and direct workers. Authority is rarely delegated, and control remains firmly centralized. Managers are more authoritarian and actively intervene to get things done. Although Theory X management has largely fallen out of fashion in recent times, Big organizations may find that adopting it is unavoidable due to the sheer number of people that they employ and the tight deadlines that they have to meet. Second, Theory Y. In strong contrast to Theory X, Theory Y management makes the following assumptions. 1. Work can be as natural as play if the conditions are favorable. 2. People will be self-directed and creative to meet their work and organizational objectives if they are committed to them. Three. People will be committed to their quality and productivity objectives if rewards are in place that address higher needs, such as self-fulfillment. 4. The capacity for creativity spreads throughout organizations. 5. Most people can handle responsibility because creativity and ingenuity are common in the population. 6. Under these conditions, people will seek responsibility. Based on these assumptions, Theory Y managers have an optimistic, positive opinion of their people, and they tend to use a decentralized, participative management style. This encourages a more collaborative, trust-based relationship between managers and their team members. In Theory Y organizations, people have greater responsibility, and managers encourage them to develop their skills and suggest improvements. Appraisals are regular and used to encourage open communication, rather than control staff. Theory Y organizations also give employees frequent opportunities for promotion. Theory Y has become more popular among organizations. This reflects workers' increasing desire for more meaningful careers that provide them with more than just money. Section 2. Theory X and Theory Y in the Workplace Although both styles of management can motivate people, the success of each will largely depend on your team's needs and your organizational objectives. Therefore, in the workplace, most managers will likely use a mixture of Theory X and Theory Y. For example, a manager may use a Theory X style of management for new starters who will likely need a lot of guidance, or in a situation that requires the manager to take control, such as a crisis. But a manager wouldn't use it when managing a team of experts who are used to working under their own initiative and need little direction. If that manager did, it would likely have a demotivating effect and may even damage the relationship. Circumstances can also affect your management style. For example, Theory X is generally more prevalent in larger organizations or in teams where work can be repetitive and target-driven. 
In contrast, theory Y tends to be favored by organizations that have a flatter structure and where people at the lower levels are involved in decision making and have some responsibility. However, both theory X and theory Y have their challenges. For instance, the restrictive nature of theory X could cause people to become demotivated and uncooperative if your approach is too strict. This may lead to high staff turnover and could damage a company's reputation in the long term. Conversely, if managers adopt a theory Y approach that gives people too much freedom, it may allow them to stray from their key objectives or lose focus. Less motivated individuals may also take advantage of this more relaxed working environment by shirking their work. Section 3. Ouchi's Theory Z During the 1980s, American business and industry experienced a tsunami of demand for Japanese products and imports, particularly in the automotive industry. This may lead you to ask, why were U.S. consumers clamoring for cars, televisions, stereos, and electronics from Japan? Many management scholars believe that the secret to Japanese companies' success was not what they were producing, but how they were managing their people. Management professor William Uchi argued that Western organizations could learn from their Japanese counterparts. Although born and educated in America, Professor Uchi was of Japanese descent and spent a lot of time in Japan studying the country's approach to workplace teamwork and participative management. The result was Theory Z, a development beyond Theory X and Theory Y that blended the best of Eastern and Western management practices. Uchi's theory first appeared in his 1981 book, Theory Z, How American Management Can Meet the Japanese Challenge. Generally, Professor Uchi's theory, Z, makes the following assumptions about workers. First, employees seek to build cooperative and intimate working relationships with their co-workers. In other words, employees have a strong desire for affiliation. Second, employees expect reciprocity and support from the company. People want to maintain a work-life balance and they value a working environment in which things like family, culture, and traditions are considered to be just as important as the work itself. Third, given the right management support, employees can be trusted to do their jobs to their utmost ability and look after their own and others' well-being. Managers who adopt the Theory Z approach normally implement the following principles. 1. Collective decision-making. This is the core principle of the Z theory and connects to the previously mentioned Y theory. By involving employees in decision-making, they feel like part of the organization and will do everything they can to maintain the decision taken. 2. Long-term employment. Following the need for safety, as Maslow mentioned, it is vital for employees to possess the certainty that they will have a job in the future. This job security, or job guarantee, generates loyal employees who feel part of the organization. 3. Job rotation. Job rotation helps employees to become generalist rather than specialist, although specialism benefits the organization as well. With job rotation, employees are given the opportunity to get to know all facets of the organization, gain insight into each other's work, and improve their skills. For example, there is a chance that they can be deployed in different departments and levels. 4. Slow promotion. It is not necessary for employees to shoot up on the hierarchical ladder, like a rocket in a short time. By taking more time, they get the chance to develop well and carry out their work with more dedication. 5. Focus on training. This leads to continuous improvement of employees' performance. Employees get plenty of time to develop, which will improve their qualities and skills in the organization's favor. 6. Care for personal circumstances. Although an employee is present at work for 8 hours a day, they also have a private life in which their family plays an important role. According to the Z theory, an organization has a moral obligation to pay attention to the personal circumstances of its employees and to provide support, understanding, and dedication under challenging situations. 7. Formalize measures. By giving clarity, employees know where they stand. This is why it is the task of an organization to draw up rules and to indicate in advance what the end goal is and what is expected of employees. This makes it possible to work more efficiently and effectively. Number eight, individual responsibility. In line with the previously mentioned Y theory, it is essential for employees to have their own responsibilities and to help contribute to the organization. They are motivated to carry out the work on time and well when they have their own responsibilities. In general, Theory Z represents a humanistic approach to management. 
It is a hybrid management approach combining Japanese management philosophies with U.S. culture. In addition, Theory Z breaks away from McGregor's Theory Y. Theory Y is a largely psychological perspective focusing on individual dyads of employer-employee relationships, while Theory Z changes the levels of analysis to the entire organization. Professor Uchi claimed the benefits of Theory Z would be reduced employee turnover, increased commitment, improved morale, and job satisfaction, and drastic increases in productivity. Although Theory Z has many advantages compared with Theory X and Y, it is certainly not without limitations. First, it can be difficult for organizations and employees to make lifetime employment commitments. Second, slow promotions and group decision making may not be a good fit with companies operating in cultural, social, and economic environments where those work practices are not the norm. To sum up, Theory X, Y, and Z of employee motivation have been widely applied in human resource management, organizational behavior analysis, and organizational development. Though each of them has its advantages and limitations, they provide a platform for managers to better understand the changing dynamics of human behavior and motivate their employees. So, what do you think about the theory X, Y, and Z? Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.